and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I don't think a lot of people realize what that means because it really is, um, it's pretty deep. So, you know, if you, give me a, sh a shot of my boots and a shot of your tennis shoes there, sister. See, I put my boots on today and I just slid them on. Um, Sister Bridget had to, you know, put hers on, lace it up, tie it up. It's a little bit harder. But Hope, now let me tell you about Hope getting her feet shod. Um, you see how pretty they are? They're all dressed right dress and they're even. She has brand new aluminums on. Check this out, saints. She got some brand new aluminum shoes and she's got really small feet. They're double lots. It takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven some of uh, one of I think the back feet have eight nails. The front feet uh, didn't have quite enough hoof, so she's only got seven nails in this um, right front. But look at how pretty and shiny those shoes are. They had to cut all this off, and then they had to hammer the nails in, and they come out right here, and then they clench them down. And it's a whole entire process, saints, for her to be shod. Uh, just kind of show her. She's having some hay, and she's standing real sweet and pretty. She's a good girl. She's so pretty. Look at her. She says, I know you're videoing me. She's such a ham. So, saints, um, when we're talking about having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, what does that really mean? What does that entail? Well, each of those hoofs, each of those hoofs, I mean, get a close-up, one, two, three, four. Each of those hoofs have to be meticulously trimmed and they have to fit that shoe she's a double lot she has small feet so the farrier has to measure he might have to pound out the shoe um, he's got to take a big huge fingernail trimmer and trim those hooves kind of like you going and, and getting a pedicure or manicure you you know you get the works so by the time I spend a hundred bucks on a, a new set of uh, aluminum horseshoes on Miss Hope, she's looking all pretty, ain't she? She got brushed. But um, I tell you what, saints, when um, when you have something that you have to maintain, the, the horse has to have her feet trimmed and shod, put shoes on regularly. And um, it really helps, especially with a horse like her that has flat soles, because you want a sole to be kind of concave. And that's the S-O-L-E, the sole of her hoof, um, of her foot. And if they're flat, then she, um, if she doesn't have shoes on, she'll always be hitting the ground on that tender part of the, the sole. So you put that shoe on and it, if you look, it kind of elevates it up a little bit. And um, she's shod now. She's shod properly. Isn't that cool? How it elevates the, the hoof and you've got some this frog right here the tender part this this frog and this sole is not going to be flat on the ground so the same thing um kind of entails in the bible if you think about it saints when god said have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace what does that mean it's like how does that have anything to do with a horse being shod well there's a process did you find out about the process, Sister Bridget? I did. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? It is. If you do so, the study. When there's a process involved, God is trying to tell us something. And we know that Ephesians chapter 6 talk, tells us about the full armor of God. This is very important for you to grasp, saints, that this horse has been through a process. Her feet had to be um, clipped, trimmed. They had to be the right size. The, the man had to then file down the hoof. He had to bang out the shoe to get it to fit right. It's the same thing with this gospel, this word of God. If you never get in this word and you're never prepared with the gospel, how can you tell people about the good news? You can't tell people about the good news if you don't know anything about the good news. First of all, you got to know the good news. Then you know, you've got to know how to deliver the good news. So there's a process when you get saved when you are regenerated and you're born again, then you should be really hungry for wanting to know who God is. Is that kind of the process, Sister Bridget? Oh, man. What, uh, what happened to you when you first got saved? Did you just want to automatically open the Word and read it? No, I thought that was all there was to it. Woo! What happened when you started getting hungry for this Word? You start digging. Well, when you start digging, you start the process of being shod, yep. having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So that's kind of like 
the Lord God Almighty being that uh, heavenly farrier, and he takes them big old clippers, and he starts clipping back some yeah. of them, them um, overgrown toes and heels, and he gets in there and peels that frog away and gets that soul bared. Okay, now let me explain something to you, saints. Let me show you again so you get this. This is the soul, okay? And it gets kind of hard, and it gets kind of, um, you know, real grown up, and it can even get ridges right here that causes her to be lame. So he's going to come in, he's going to use a tool, and he's going to pare away the frog, he's going to pare away the soul, and he's going to uh, scrape that down and make it l nice and flat and level. Okay, saints, think about that process. This is so cool because God's going to do the same thing with you when you're regenerated. You're a baby Christian. You're on the milk of the word. He's going to go in there. He's going to trim that. He's going to trim all that down. He's going to scrape that soul. He's going to file it down. There's going to be a process for your feet to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, we find the gospel um, defined in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and um, starting in verses 1 through 8. So I'm going to turn there to 1 Corinthians. If you've got your Bible, grab it. Because, um, hey, it's time to hear what the gospel is. Why do I need my feet, my feet, shod the process of putting the gospel on my feet? What does that have to do with my walk with Jesus? Well, it's got a lot to do. Excuse me, you don't need to eat the word, okay? I know that people need to eat the word, but you don't. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 8. She's going to help me here. I love you too. Moreover, brethren, that's y'all, not her. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Give him a shot of my feet, sister. See, I stand on the gospel. I stand on the word of God. I'm not standing on this Bible. I'm standing on what I know. I'm standing. So, there, and so he's right here say, saying, wherein ye stand. So I'm encouraging you to stand on the gospel. What's the gospel? Your feet have to be shod with the preparation of the gospel. By which you are also saved. What? You're saved by the gospel, through the gospel, by the blood of the Lamb, who is Yeshua, by putting your trust and faith in what he did on the cross. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. So if you believed in vain, you didn't really believe. Okay? You got to believe, and then you got to know, and then you got to trust, and then you're actually going to get hungry, and you're going to want your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how Christ, that's our Lord and Savior, died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He was seen of Cephas, and then of the twelve, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at one time, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. That is the gospel. How do your feet get prepared? How do your feet get prepared with the gospel of peace? Your feet have to be shod just like this horse. The Lord's going to cut away that old stuff. He's going to bear that soul high. Woo! Repent. For your redemption draweth nigh. He's going to bear that soul. He's going he's to cut off all that old stuff. You're going to get prepared through the study of his word. Not the preacher preaching it to you on a daily basis, but you hearing that preacher. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You can hear a thousand million billion sermons and never let it sink in and get to your spirit man. So faith comes by hearing by you getting in the Word of God, knowing what the gospel is, and then getting your feet shod with it, prepared, prepared. The Lord is the one that prepares you through the study of His Word, through prayer, through fasting, through fellowshipping with other believers, not non-believers believers strong believers that can sharpen your iron and get you there this is all a preparation process so that your feet my feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace 
The horse is shod with aluminum shoes. We spiritually have to be having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Why do I keep saying this? Maybe if I say it enough, you're going to figure out the correlation between the Lord taking a pair of clippers, cutting away that hoof, cutting away that soul, cutting away that frog, nailing a shoe to it, clenching that shoe to it so that shoe cannot be removed without some sort of major force, okay? Major force. You ain't just going to rip that shoe off, buddy. There's got to be some foot pounds of pressure behind it to get them nails to rip out of there. They've been put in. They've been clenched down. They've been filed. That shoe is on there until the farrier comes and takes it off or unless she rips it off through much force. So I'm going to look at my own feet. I'm going to say I'm going to stand on the gospel. I'm going to stand on the gospel. It ain't about having a boot or a tennis shoe or an aluminum shoe on. Sister, can I get a testimony here?